Hi everyone, welcome to my allotment. Today I'm gonna do the early August tour of my allotment here in Oxfordshire. It's another sunny week, sunny day. It's a bit windy, so it's been very drying and I've had to water a lot more, but uh, my have things grown. Woo! Uh, I just look back on my July tour and uh, yeah, I mean, even I was shocked. Time has moved so slow for me. I, unlike many others, I'm still furloughed. So I spend a lot of time on the allotment uh, every day I'm here. So I just don't, I guess I just don't see it, but I'm so glad I'm doing these video records of the growth because I, I wouldn't, I believed it myself. Um, but yeah, so it's a bit windy uh, for filming, but at least it's sunny, hey? So let's get into it. Starting with the greenhouse, I mean, things have grown a lot in the pots. So the dahlias are still going strong and the bishop's children I grew from seed have started flowering. I've already deadheaded a few. There's two plants in here and one of them is flowering. Oh, this one needs to go actually. Um, and here's some, I think these are cosmos. I mean, that's what I thought I'd grown, but this, the foliage is quite different from what I know is cosmos. Um, and these are yellow. I don't remember sowing yellow, but there you are. Uh, and these blue clary denim are just coming through here. Uh, it's being a bit swamped, but I think it'll be nice. So I have been feeding my pots because that's what you're supposed to do with plants in pots, right? But obviously you should not be doing that to Cosmos, <laughs> which when I saw it on Instagram, I'm like, oh yeah. Then I remembered that that's something I learned last year uh, because they just end up putting on growth and no flowers. So no flowers yet, but I have some self-seeded ones uh, in the wildflower bit that are also not have any flowers yet. So. It's not just the ones I've grown <laughs> seed this year. And in the greenhouse, things are going quite well. Uh, so, right, let's start here. This is one of the cucumbers. Uh, and I've had so many cucumbers. So there's one here that I need to pick. Um, and it is continuing all the way around there. So I'm hoping that this will just continue along the wire here and then I've also got another one in this corner that is climbing up I don't know if you can see that the back here and it's actually reached the ceiling now with a few flowers so I'm hoping for more fruit here so there's actually I saw a double which I've never seen before that's I don't know if that's been pollinated or not we'll see this one looks like it's growing. So we had um, a bit of a cold spell and you can really tell because all the cucumbers for a section here just have not, you know, they've just dried up. They haven't been pollinated because it was cold. The greenhouse was shut and I guess the pollinators weren't so interested, but there's definitely more fruit coming here. So they're very temperature sensitive in terms of that. And then I have another cucumber here and uh, yeah, it's ginormous. I need to pick that as well. But again, it's the same thing here. There was a few that just uh, didn't pollinate and it's actually this uh, cucumber. This is Femspot. It's much slower growing. Uh, so it's only reached this far and uh, yeah, got bigger cucumbers. But I'm so happy with the way they've grown this year. And then there's the tomatoes. So I have, as you can see, I've pruned a lot of the foliage off. And that's because I saw what I thought was early signs of blight. So they get these, um, this yellow pattern that then turns into brown spots, um, like here and then starts to shrivel up. So it was really, really wet for a while there. Um, don't know if you can see that. Oh yeah, there. Um, and I think it was just too humid in here. 
Uh, so I've cut it and the weather's been so dry, so I think it's stalled anything that's happening in terms of fungal disease. Obviously, if once it's in, you can't get rid of it, but I'm hoping if the summer now is warm, we might manage to get a few ripe tomatoes. I mean, sun gold is ripening nicely. These have ripened today, like they were not like this this morning. Um, and the trusses on these, like this is a double truss as well. Like I've never seen such long trusses on my tomatoes before. Um, and the rosella has started cropping and again have really long trusses. And these are really interesting tomatoes. Uh, they're quite tasty actually. Like yeah, and a double truss here, so there's another cherry. And then I have two um, beefsteak, yellow beefsteaks, and this one is starting to turn now. So I'm hoping I'll get some crop. And this is a red beefsteak, and there's no color change there yet. But yeah, so there's a lot going on in the greenhouse. I have some aubergines, which have struggled for a long time. And I finally re-watched um, Charles Dowding's video on how to train them. So basically he just trains two stems up branches and then he pinches out any new, because it branches just like tomatoes do. So if you pinch them out, they just concentrate on these two and they produce, and, and once I did it, all the flowers appeared. Uh, and I, yeah, you can't tell if there's a fruit coming or not, um, but we'll see. So this one's doing less well, it's much smaller. But if I just get one aubergine this year, I'll be quite happy. And the peppers are doing much better. So I started feeding them with my Bokashi tea once a week, and they only get water once a week as well unless it's like super super hot and i had uh, my first crop of padron pepper and this is a padron pepper and i see this new fruit coming and this padron pepper has put on a lot of growth and lots of uh, new flowers so that one is doing pretty well and here is a sweet banana pepper which i think you could cut now but I want to wait and see. So it goes all the should go all the way to red if you leave it. Um, but I was hoping to maybe cut it when it's yellow. So it's called banana because of the shape. But I don't know. It doesn't look too much like a banana. And there's another one coming. And apparently they have a slightly spicy flavor. A little bit reminiscent of a mild chili pepper. So that's interesting. And then there's this pepper here which is a... Uh, golden California pepper so it's been this size for quite a long time and um, yeah I just I think it needs better weather so it's obviously it's, it's quite heavy now like, look at that it's really really thick so I might need to stake it because it obviously has heavy fruit and yeah this new fruit coming there um, but yeah I guess these are also for yellow I don't know why I'm growing so many yellow peppers <laughs> And some of the chilies are coming. I mean, this is uh, an early jalapeno, which I've completely given up on. And um, yeah, the the lemon, um, what's it called? Lemon drop chili pepper. I think it has, yeah, it's got fruit coming there. So it took forever, it was tiny. And then all of a sudden they started flowering. And this one's still very compact. But this uh, Chinese dragon tongue, I mean, I don't know, this fruit does not look healthy in the plant. Mm, yeah, this veining, I don't know, it's, something's up with them. And uh, yeah, there are a few um, Hungarian hot wax, but they don't look, yeah, they don't look healthy. So I don't know what's up, if it's aminopyrrolid in the compost or not, I'm not 100% sure. So they don't all have it. Um, it might just be a weather thing, though. And my ginormous, ginormous marigolds. The bees love them, though, as you can tell. And that's why they're here, partly just to bring in the pollinators. And they are so pretty. Like, they they really brighten up the space. Uh, and 
you can almost not see the sun gold for the marigolds because there's <laughs> there's so strong the color it's really really nice in here right now and the basil is doing well uh so they we had a slug attack and i actually found the slug from what, looking out from the outside and had like it was like hiding between the, the compost and the glass so i could see it from the outside and once now i, pick, I picked that one and dispatched it they really recovered well so i will be able to pick again and it's the same here you can see on the the new leaves are not damaged but the old ones were pretty pretty eaten and uh, yeah i mean if i was a slug i would eat basil too i would i could say hey definitely definitely <laughs> And this is probably my worst looking pepper. This is a sweet banana again. So yes, yeah, yeah, there's some new fresh leaves coming. So yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Mm. Right, maybe I should have a tomato. What do you think? Right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have one. I mean, none of these have made it inside the house yet. Because they're just, they're just like little, Little sweeties, aren't they? Ah, oh, it's so spicy. Second one. Mm. It's not much pizza sun gold. Actually, while I'm here, I'm just going to try it straight after with a Brussella and see which one I prefer. So the rosella is sort of a dusky red pink with a green on top where the sun hits. Not the prettiest because of that, I think. It's like, um, it doesn't have that brilliant red of a tomato, right? Yeah, less spicy than the sun gold, but juicier flesh, or like meatier flesh, I should say. Yeah, maybe that's better in the salad. <laughs> well, let's continue. And I've got some more seedlings in here as well. These are um, black winter radish, which I'm so excited about, multi sown. And then there's turnips here, also multi sown. And I'm gonna have to grow them under mesh, I think, because they will be eaten. Uh, yeah, and where am I gonna grow them? Maybe after the, maybe after the main crop potatoes, I think. Right, so that's the greenhouse. And here's some of the seedlings. I have some seedlings in the greenhouse too, because they get eaten by uh, birds, I think, and there's this more um, chard and then beetroot to replace. And then down here, I've got um, oh, some of these African marigolds that apparently deter or kill off bindweed roots and other cooch grass, for example. And then there's more dill, parsley, and coriander coming, and lemon balm, which I don't know what I'm gonna do with yet. And then my artichokes, so I've whittled them down to six artichokes and these are the best looking ones so there's three violetta and three green globe and then i have some artichokes over there i'm gonna give them away to my plot neighbors i think and here's some foxgloves for next year i'm gonna i think i'm gonna plant them out in the wildflower area and i've started started taking strawberry runners and this one doesn't look like it's made it but you never know with strawberries might be some new growth coming Maybe. They are very, very sturdy plants. All right, let's get into the main event. Ah, God, so much these days. Like, look at this crown prince squash. I looked in the July video and it was, I said in that video that it was huge. I'm like, that's nothing. This is huge. It's just one plant. And it's got three ginormous fruit already. Um, so I have never grown this before, so I'm not 100% sure like when you harvest. So I understood these to, you leave them until the foliage dies back and then you just let them cure and you store them. 
obviously you can maybe cut them sooner but yeah if someone knows specifics let me know and this is another crown prince a smaller one which is tiny uh, but yes yeah, so this is the one fruit that that one's got going it's much much slower growing and it's only this is the extent of the vine that is from the other plant and here is the rhubarb which is looking very 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 lush i haven't done anything with it i should really make a pie or something but you know you just never get around to it like and it's just full of sugar isn't it and here's the christmas tree it's put on lots of new growth this year i'm pretty it's been pretty happy i planted it in um a pot with ericaceous soil i had and it gets quite a lot of water it doesn't matter that it's uh, snuck up close here because it'll probably need to be against the wall anyway. We have such a tiny house. And uh, so this is all the lettuce now. Oh, that's where that went. <laughs> I need to tidy that away. Uh, so I've got endive here. And I think these were just planted out at the beginning of July. So they've done really well. I'm picking a lot of lettuce and I planted coriander in the bits where I lost some lettuce seedlings. So this is from a mixed seed packet of lettuce. And I don't know what it is, but it's really nice. And it's like, the leaves are almost like hands. And these frilly ones are also very nice. And then, uh, yeah, these are very good as well. So we'll see how quickly they flower. And in here is one of, one of many brassica beds. All right, let's see. Um, and it's mainly cauliflower and they've they've put on quite a lot of growth uh, and way over there are some of the kales and they've just been planted out so and we just built this cage today I had help from my little my little friend who comes and helps sometimes she's a colleague um, and then um, parsnips and chives doing, I mean the chives, have they grown a bit? I mean they're really for next year so. And I did harvest one of the parsnips and it was uh, quite quite long already but it obviously will grow longer. And it was so hard to get out. It's been so dry uh, and yeah, just have to leverage it out. In here do we have some beautiful Beautiful red cabbage. The color is just amazing. It is starting to, to head up now. And there's also fennel that I've grown from seed now after the solstice. And then the, the uh, popping corn is doing well, but not yet any tassels. Oh! Oh, there is! Oh, wow, finally. It's taken a long time. They are tall. Um, but, um, yeah, the other sweet corn that's for eating is much further ahead. And uh, the poppies are flopping. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see here. This is the butternut. And last time it was, like, proper compact. But now it is starting to send out arms here. And look at these flowers. I mean, these are just male, but they're so intricate and quite different from the other squash. And um, no female flowers yet that I've seen, but uh, there's usually males first, isn't there? And this is the warty old French winter squash, Gallows de Zigne, I think it's called. Um, it was doing so well putting on loads of growth and now it's sort of started going all yellow and it's just giving me one fruit. Maybe that's the way it grows, I don't know. And this is uh, the same beefsteak as I have in the greenhouse, but this one's actually ripening faster, uh, even though it's outside. Isn't that weird? Yeah, well, and the melons. The melons, all but one melon has died in the greenhouse and these are doing much, 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 oh, much, much, much better. And there is female fruits. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna get any fruit this year. They should have been growing already. There's another one over there. Uh, 
they're just they're cantaloupe early cantaloupes and they're just yeah i just can't grow melons sweet peas still producing but wow i am so behind in cutting them back <laughs> and still some beetroot here the carrots are sown i'm not coming up quite well but the germination poor better on that side but it's just a little bit sad i do think the cat was on here and the red onions have started cropping so these are multi-sown doing rather nicely so i did try cutting the tops off and then putting the soil away from them and i think it has helped in, in making them swell a bit more um, but I have ants and they keep putting the soil back <laughs> And I did sow some more carrots. So these are my main crop potatoes and uh, They're not looking too well. I think I'm gonna harvest them. So they've got all sorts wrong with them There's two types. I did pull one plant and uh, there was crop there So I think I would just get them out of the ground and try to store them and then Yeah, I didn't grow much many tomato t potatoes this year. Uh-oh. Oh, I just have not been earthing them up properly as well. I've just completely neglected my potatoes. But you can see the the mounds that they're making, that there are potatoes here. Um, yeah. So there are potatoes, it's just maybe not as many. I think I'm gonna maybe grow them in pots next year. The celery and the celeriac doing well. So this is a self-blanching celery. It's very pale, but it's also quite pale because I'm not watering enough. And uh, celeriac is also doing well. And this is, let's see, can you see anything? Is it starting to form? Oh yeah, it's starting to form a little root. Obviously they got a while to go yet. And this is another brassica bed. And I've just planted, there's still, there's still um, beetroot in here, still onions in here, but there's lots of kohlrabi there, and there's more broccoli and um, some swede in here. So you can see the kohlrabi is forming nicely, still have a bit to go, but yeah, doing well. Some of them are larger, as in taller. So that makes me think ah, they might not form properly, but, but rise up to flower instead, but that's okay. I have plenty. And it looks like I need to tighten that protection. So I protect my brassicas, all my brassicas with mesh or netting because the cabbage white butterfly is just everywhere here. And um, yeah, they just go through them like nothing. This is the giant pumpkin. So in my last video, I had one growing here, but it all of a sudden stopped growing and it went all soft. And that means uh, it, the plant had rejected it, basically. So I twisted that out and went with the number two, which is growing now. And uh, it's not pretty, but it's all about size with these ones. And I see there are, I, I took out other female fruit. Um, because the plant doesn't need more, but I'll leave this one for now. And again, the, the plant is starting to die back and I'm like, is it autumn already? And these are French beans I've got growing around it and they're doing fantastic on this end. Got, I've already picked loads, picked some of these yesterday and there's already so many, maybe not pickable yet, but soon. And this is a uh, cobra, it's called French bean. And even these straggler bits are starting to climb now. Um, so we'll probably have lots. And there's more parsnips. But I'm so disappointed with my courgettes this year. So this is a round one, Tondo di Piacenza, uh, or everyone thinks that they're gem squash, but uh, they are courgettes. And there are more female fruits here, but I think they just do not like cold weather. But look how tiny it is. I mean, they're supposed to be sprawling, right? I'm hoping there's still time for a glut. And I only, you know, I only planted two <laughs> courgettes because we don't eat that many or my partner doesn't like them. So 
And here are some uh, other French beasts. So these are dwarf and they have been trampled on. And they have been producing, but now I see there are no more beans coming. So I think maybe now that I've staked them, the ones that were lying flat, maybe they'll recover. Oh yeah, there's some, there's some here. So this is Cupidon. So I think they look exactly the same when you pick them as the Cobra, but there is a flavor difference. And I, yeah, I think I prefer the Cobra. And these are the carrots I'm cropping now. So it's two different varieties. Uh, one short and stubby one and then called Axella. And then early Nantes next to it. And the early Nantes, I don't think I like the flavor of. Uh, the Axella is so much nicer. So I've used the, both those packets now. Sewn them over there and then uh, I'll have to buy some more for next year. Uh, so here's chicory. And look forward to that later on. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but they're really nice when you cook them. And here is fennel. And they have uh, regrown from the roots left in the ground here. You can see, if you just twist them out, they regrow. Uh, and I'm the first time I'm doing that this year. So I'm gonna see if I like it. And there are lots of different varieties here. Uh, so this is, I think, perfection here. So not all of them. I managed to rip some of them out. So we'll see if this is better for producing bulb. So this is uh, bulbing fennel, right? So they should produce a bulb that you can harvest. So we'll see if I get any. Um, yes. And this is another veg just made today. Filled it with green sprouting broccoli for spring and then purple spreading broccoli. And I also squeezed in lots of little kales that I had left over. And there's some chard in here as well. And it's just starting to, to grow now. It's beautiful. Um, that's the rainbow, like bright lights or whatever it's called. Parsley. And then these two. This is sunburst um, patty pan squash, right? So this is what I'm used to them looking like. And these are from the same packet. And there's one slightly weirder looking there. But this plant produces these round ones. And I have not had one yet that has stayed. So they kind of grow for a bit and then they get soft and squishy and uh, fall off basically. So I don't know if there's something wrong with this plant. It's got more fruit than this one, but this one now is caught up. And uh, well, at least I, I'm glad I planted two because uh, I thought at the time like, oh my God, it's going to be way too many. But yeah, I mean, has anyone seen that before? Does it come from a cross-pollinated, cross-pollinated one or something? And yeah, some sorry looking strawberries. The... Uh, Autumn fruiting strawberries, though, that I planted this year are doing so well. There's so much fruit coming. And the bees, the bees absolutely love the flowers. I've never seen so many bees, like, you know, they absolutely love it, which is great. But yeah, so over there's the beehive. It's a gardener's beehive, so. I'm trying to lure, lure the bees there with a lure, like you spray in, but no bees yet. So I planted this area here, so this is just topsoil, with, well basically sowed, I sprayed lots of, I've made my own wildflower mix, and it contained all sorts, and it looks like a lot of the sunflowers I've taken. And I found an oxalis bulb in my compost, so I planted that there, and it's come up, which is quite funny. Um, doesn't look too healthy, but and yeah, so there's quite a few sunflowers. There's one there, one there, one there. And this is like three weeks ago, right? And this is uh, the self sown cosmos. And um, got some potatoes, some self sown cornflowers. And these are the Bampton, Verbena Bampton. So I've planted these here, and there's more sunflowers, and a little bit of everything, yeah. So Pretty excited. 
there's like a, um, a Welsh poppy. I don't know if you can see that. A yellow Welsh poppy there. So that will self-seed everywhere. I think I brought them with me from Liverpool because these are the alpine strawberries that have come from the garden as well. And they spread like absolute wildfire as well. Uh, and I think these Welsh poppies have come from that pot or something. Um, yeah, this one's already empty, so that's good. It's doing its thing. And here's a poor, a poor butterfly bush <laughs> that I've planted. It's supposed to be like a multicolored flower, um, but so far it's only been like a dusky, dusky pink color. And um, yeah, here we are, the final bit. <laughs> There's a squash coming through here. Let's see, let's start this end. Whoa, that's a, oh, that's a, the, all the tractors are out with the harvest, harvesting. So this is um, runner beans, czar runner bean tower. It's so nice and full. And I did see it's got some um, beans coming. Yeah, it's got some runner beans here. So it's the first time I'm growing runner beans and these ones apparently are very nice dried. Uh, so I have two towers or two teepees. So this one I'm gonna just keep for drying and the other one's over there and I'll pick from that one. And here are two climbing squash and this is blue banana and it's growing daily now and it's great. Absolutely great, love it. And there's another fruit there and it's absolutely just sending out lots and lots and lots of arms and I just have to train it like every day and tie it in. So it's going over the top here and I'm just gonna let it trail down and then we'll see what happens. And here's more brassicas and some purple beans. Uh, so these are now purple, no, these are just sprouts for Christmas. Got four plants. And then there's um, Kaylets. So, if anyone knows when Kaylets are ready for harvesting, like what what is it you're actually harvesting? Are they like little flowers, um, or or what? <laughs> Any help? And there's some Savoy cabbage down the middle as well. And then there's a Swede. Um, yeah, you can probably see a Swede over there. There's a few Swede. So they're gonna be ready sooner than I thought, actually. Oop. Oh no, destroyed another ant nest. Oops. Let's put this back on. Right, oh it's, god, there's just so many ants. That's why I get bitten all the time. But they are great pollinators as well. So I've got four cucumbers growing up here. Outdoor cucumbers. Um, burp is tasty. No, this is Ladiva. All right, so we have Ladiva here, which is doing much better. Um, and I think this, yeah, it's a ginormous cucumber here. Oh no, it's another one there. And then this then is Burp is tasty, which is still struggling to get going, but I've already had fruit from both of these. Um, and here's more. This is um, French bean purple teepee. They're great looking, like nothing's more photogenic than a purple bean, really. And uh, here are four summer squash. So one, two, three, four, way too many for this little area. Oh, one of them, we have two summer crookneck. There's one here that I again think is growing and it's got lots of more fruit coming still haven't harvested any and then these are Benning's no it's this is Patisson Blanc I think there's a female there um, and uh, yeah still waiting on those and these are Berlotti beans dwarf and they're really starting to fatten up now. I think you're getting to the point where you could probably harvest them. 
Um, still got a while to go. Awesome, but they're really the ch color change is really coming along in there. Really, you can really tell their beans in there. So apparently, you can freeze them fresh, and instead of drying them, and they're super tasty. So I might try that. So this is another Galeuse Designe that I had over there as well, and this is one of the fruits. And we'll see if it takes. It was planted out later than the other one and um, it has taken longer to set a fruit. And this is eating corn and they're all out. This one's even starting to turn. Um, this cob here. So, oh, uh, yeah, it has a while to go yet. But yeah, getting there and this bit is like super tall. So this is my height, so it is taller than me, which is, it's quite funny, like, they're not all that height, of course, but it's good that they're happy here. It's good, and I love it that the squash is just coming out. <laughs> um, oh, and this is another brassica bed, and in here are uh, ooh, cauliflowers that were planted much earlier than the ones over there, of course. And then I had some filder kraut cabbage, so these pointy ones. And still no, still no cauliflower, uh, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but beautiful red cabbage in there, absolutely gorgeous, and um, not eaten at all, doing really well. So I had another white cabbage in there that was just completely decimated by, oh saying that though, completely decimated by earwigs, and they just moved in and started burrowing in. But so this is a cauliflower mix and apparently there's Romanesco in there, <laughs> which I had totally forgot. So there's a Romanesco growing, which I've never grown before. But um, otherwise, very poor on the cauliflower. Maybe they are forming now. Sorry, that's really, really boring for you to look at. Uh, more sweet peas. So I'm not watering these and you can tell they're really crispy but producing lots and lots of flowers but i do again need to have a proper prune and final bit love 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 the color i need to deadhead the calendula um, ooh, but yeah gorgeous colors and the marigolds are just ginormous so these are outdoor tomatoes in here this is the sun gold, which has started cropping. So this one, this area was where I was worried that there was amino pyrrolid poisoning because this one has only has a little bit of leaf curl, otherwise looked normal. Um, but these two were just so weird and it still is a bit weird. The extreme curling over of the whole leaf branch and really, really fat stem never seen anything like it. This is a beef steak and um, they're supposed to be smooth, the flowers, sorry, the, the fruit, they're not supposed to be like this. Um, yeah, uh, and this yellow brandy vine is the same as I have inside and this is the only fruit that's formed so far, so I'm not, probably not gonna get any from these. So I have a theory about it. So they were out during the frost we had in May and you know everything has genetics in their cells but your the thing about genetics is that they're not all all the genes are not expressed all the time instead there's something called your epigenome or epigenetics which is much more determined by environment so for example if which is why they advise pregnant women for example not to eat too much put on too much weight because that will affect the epigenome of the baby she's carrying so it will think that that is the normal intake of calories for example um however it is not but there is there is um sorry there's enough pressure there to change what genes are expressed so that when that baby is born and grows up it will constantly try to get back to that 
a level of uh, fat content in the blood or whatever. So you will always, it will, you will f to keep your weight low, you will fight against your genes or your epigenome, which is much, much, much more difficult. So I think the cold shock that these tomatoes were exposed to would have been enough to change their epigenetics and will have caused these funny growth patterns on some of them. So this is another one which has gone really funny. Lots and lots and lots of flowers, no fruit yet. This is the same variety, was planted out after the frost and has got normal tomatoes growing. And uh, this one was out in the frost and has fruit. Uh, just nothing ripe yet. So, yeah, that's my theory. Because I had a word back from the company that makes the compost I have and saying that it's highly unlikely that it is uh, contaminated because there's no green waste or manure in that compost. Basically, it's peat based. <laughs> Great. Um, that's me told. So, I need to really change that for next year. There was not much choice in lockdown. That's my only excuse. So I've got some Black Eyed Susans here, which are looking great. And they're climbing up here. And then there's a Cuca Melon. Um, and it's climbing up into the marigold, because the marigold is just a brute and has <laughs> burst out of its confinement. I don't know if I'll get any fruit of the Cuca Melon. We'll see, there's only one plant there. So. And here are my Multisone Leeks. They're starting to fatten up and you can start with multi-sowing. You can start harvesting the leeks, uh, you know, to take the big one, maybe this autumn. And then, or you can just leave them to grow bigger over winter if you want. It's up to you. Here's more of this Verbena Bampton I grew from seed this year. And they are really beautiful, delicate flowers. And the same with the other verbena, the bees love it. They have like little flowers here that they can get their tongues into. And uh, so these are the edamame beans. And there's two in there. And yeah, they need to fatten up a bit more before harvesting. But I'm really happy with them. They're like super easy to grow. For me anyway, this year. And uh, yeah, you just treat them like French beans, dwarf. These ones are dwarf, so dwarf French beans. And I have uh, a dahlia here, same as the one in front of the greenhouse. And Bishop's Children, it's starting to flower now, so that's great. And here are the squash that are climbing up the arch. So these are Uchi Kikuris. And this fruit I probably need to start supporting because it's getting quite big. It's, look at that color. Uh, and one on that side as well. So this one, I broke the growing tip off by mistake. So it has branched a lot and has a lot more branches coming up and lots more female fruit. This one is gone up much faster, much taller. And, and the goal is to get over there. So we'll see. We'll see if that happens this year. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, these dahlias are the same, so they are, again, much further along. It'll be fun. And lastly, oh yes, I've had to tie up this bean pole, bean teepee, uh, here. Because <laughs> it was starting to lean. And this is, oh, so loud, these structures. And this is a bit of a mistake. I've planted Benning's Green in here, which is a patty palm. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's tricky getting in, but there's female fruit there, which is not been pollinated. All right, I can come up. Yeah, so you can see when it go like soft and squishy, it's just not been pollinated. So you can just take it off. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you could probably eat them, but yeah, not for me. All right, I think that's it in terms of the veg. <laughs> that's quite a lot, isn't it? And this is um, the lavender hedge I've got. Some sunflowers growing into it. And um, yeah, I've got three stretches of it. So I've got some fennel here, which is nice and yellow. This is just English fennel. 
and um, got the lavender down here, English lavender, and then some sunflowers in it. So some of them have lost their growing tips. Something's eating them. Um, so we'll see if we get any of these tall ones, but these small ones, the teddies, are, we've got buds now, so I'm hopeful that these will flower. And it will, I think it will look great amongst the lavender. Might not get to do this next year because the lavender might get so big. Uh, but yeah. So that's it. It's huge, the area I'm growing this year. Hey kitty. I've seen him eat two voles today. No, one today, one yesterday. Mm. Keeping the colony in check, are you? So this is quickly becoming one of my favorite parts on the allotment. It took its time to get going. It's, in, ooh, it's an old uh, wheelbarrow that I've planted into. Um, and I've grown zinnias from seed this year. And this is another free packet of seeds that I think I won or got for free from Gardener's World. And um, they're just so gorgeous. I just looked at the packet and was like, oh, this color mix, really? You know, it's got pinks, it's got shocking pink, it's got orange, really dark orange, other types of pink and yellows. But it looks really nice together and it really brightens up this corner. I'm not sure it's actually transferring to the camera. And then these um, cornflowers just add the blue to it. I mean, yes, it could have been done better. And yes, I'm not watering enough, blah, blah, blah. But wow. And yes, they are being eaten by everything. But it looks so cool. And then here I've got my own little foraging bit. So. I've, I picked flowers, elderflower from here, and soon it's time for the berries. And the whole hedgerow is basically full of blackberries, which is just lovely. And they're out. Yeah, they're tasty. Mm, so pretty. There's actually, um, uh, crab apple tree as well. Uh, yeah, that really tall one is a crab apple tree. Oh, there's just so much fruit here. Oh wow, the sun just came out and <laughs> the colors just went haywire. Uh, oh yeah, see all that? Can you see all that fruit? Yeah, so I think it's a crab apple anyway. Then yeah, no, it is a crab apple. So maybe we can make some jelly. So many helicopters around here. And here's the beehive. And uh, no bees yet, but it'll be nice. I hope if this wildflower area takes off next year and the bees have moved in, I think they're gonna love it living here. Yeah. It's another gorgeous sky over the allotments. So yeah, thanks lockdown for uh, giving me all this time to <laughs> grow all the veg I could possibly want. Though I'm sure there's always more you want to grow, isn't there? Eh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tour. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any more questions. I will try to be more regular with my video uploads. <laughs> um, yes, I'll leave you there and I say happy growing. <laughs>